So uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is David Holmes. I am the creator of STEMC Studio. And uh, actually, let's see, are we sharing screens? Let me see. Share that one. Okay. So I think I'm hoping that you can see my full screen now. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yes. Good. So I am the creator of STEMC Studio, and uh, I've sort of taken it uh, upon myself. My mission is to try to um, improve the state of education technology. Um, this really started uh, a good number of years ago, maybe about eight years ago, uh, when I was uh, trying to visualize uh, a topic in mathematics called geometric algebra, and I needed to be able to visualize things in 3D. It took a long time before I could actually create something that um, uh, really had a low enough uh, engineering kind of bar that it would really be usable by other people. Um, but eventually, I think I, I kind of came close. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is uh, how a sort of a fusion, if you like, of uh, this particular application and a new technology called, uh, or a new standard called Learning Tools Interoperability, that's LTI, um, how I think this is going to kind of create a new kind of paradigm for creating questions, um, assessments, uh, educational activities in general for students. Okay, so this is going to be kind of maybe, uh, yeah, maybe this is what, what replaces Moodle formulas and ultimately things like Stack. So, um, I'm, the way I'm going to present this is I'm going to show you first STEMC Studio. Uh, then I'm going to give a little story, um, take us back to JSX Graph Conference in uh, 2019 um, and show how that kind of led to the sort of evolution of um, the uh, my interest in learning management systems and my discovery of um, LTI. I'll then show you uh, LTI. I will actually kind of like take a look at that standard um, it can be incredibly kind of confusing if you go to their website. So I'm going to try and kind of like give you the, the quick um, overview. Um, I will be doing demos, not a lot of um, hand coding, but I'll show you a lot of code um, and things in action. Um, and uh, you might be thinking, um, you know, how, you know where, where's all the details? So I'm going to kind of like give you a little kind of cue, cue right now. Um, I've created um, a book, I call it the STEM C book. Yeah, and if you click that user guide button, then you can basically kind of like a distill distillation of uh, everything that, um, you know, I think that you need to know to be able to use STEM C St Studio and be effective uh, in uh, creating educational content for a learning management system. So, don't worry, don't sweat the details. Um, uh, you can always refer to that book. Okay, so I think that's about it. And then finally, I think in the few, you know, at the end of the presentation, I'm going to sort of wrap up by just talking a little bit about what I, you know, I think uh, the future holds, some of the challenges. Um, clearly, there are some gaps to be closed um, when you can kind of compare this to, for example, um, Stack, which has you know got a lot of momentum. And so um, kind of like really want to kind of like discuss, uh, is this really real? Um, and, uh, and then what can we do about it? Okay, so let's talk about STEM C Studio. Um, I will apologize in advance. I'm hoping that nothing crashes here. I'm running uh, Zoom on an Ubuntu um, Linux uh, desktop. And I had a little problem earlier this morning. But if, uh, if you lose me, I'm, I'll be back in five minutes. So what I'm going to show you, this is STEMC Studio. Uh, you can get to it from uh, the URL stemcstudio.com. And I'm going to take you into an application that I wrote. Um, I call it Bead on a Smooth Wire. And if you go into STEMC Studio, basically what will strike you is that you have a pretty modern editor, I would say. Okay. Um, and it's also a live coding editor. So if you go to the top, um, toolbar here, we can launch the program over here and I can show you the running program. Okay, I'll change the dark mode here so that you can probably see a little bit better. So here's the program running and, you know, I can uh, execute it. I can uh, do things to configure it. I can change various parameters. 
And this is so the details of exactly what the program is and what it's doing are not really important um, because you know you can create arbitrary programs. Let's talk about though the uh, the capabilities of the editor. So, firstly, uh, we're working primarily in uh, JavaScript, or I really should say TypeScript, which is um, like a JavaScript with a few optional annotations thrown in. And the point of that is that it gives you really highly intelligent editing. So like here you can see hover over something and you can get documentation. Uh, you can also see, for example, that if I just backspace there, I can get um, continuation, like what, what methods are available. Uh, I'll give you another example here. If I go into the curly braces at the top of a module that I'm importing, uh, and this is a, an external library, and I just hit a comma and then control space, and you can see I get available things that I can use in my program. In the escape key there and going out of that. Okay, so um, that's uh, the, a little overview of some of the things that you can you can uh, uh, do here. Obviously, I'll come down here. If you make a typo and you spell something wrong, <clears throat> then we'll also correct that. Okay, so this is kind of like a uh, a sort of a modern uh, editor. Um, another feature that I think I really want to point out here is in addition to being able to pull in external libraries here, so I'm just hovering over that, that's going to tell you where this is coming from. Um, you can also create your own internal files and bring them in. So for example, this class here is actually uh, uh, defined in this file over here. So you can have multi-file projects which allows you to kind of like create um, projects uh, and, and organize them such that they are more maintainable uh, when you kind of come back to them. Uh, there are a lot of navigation features. For example, here, I can go to the definition of my force law and it actually kind of like takes me to the point I want to go to, right? I can also go to, for example, um, I, can, I can go to type definitions. Uh, some of the other things I can do here, I'm right-clicking, by the way, with my mouse. Uh, I can find usage of things. I can rename whole symbols. So, for example, this whole symbol, I could rename it. And everywhere in my program where it's using that, it's actually a semantic rename, not a syntactic re uh, rename. So it actually is intelligent about what it's renaming. I won't actually do that right now. Uh, and some other things you can do, formatting the document and even organizing uh, these imports at the top. Okay, so it's really just kind of like give you an idea. It's like it is a, a kind of a modern, um, a modern live coding editor. Okay, now I just want to touch on something uh, a little bit quickly um, uh, because uh, Vigand Earl here was just saying that he didn't have Moodle and Stack available. And uh, he was perhaps wanting to just display things. Stempsey Studio is embeddable. Um, there is an embedding builder here, and that'll help you actually build an embedding. But here I'm in, I'm in kind of like a design time environment <clears throat> where I'm live coding and running the thing, running the program. I can actually just replace the, um, <clears throat> the word studio by viewer. And this will take me to um, a program which is just executing the, the, uh, the program. Uh, it doesn't have any of the design time features. And because of that, it loads, it loads fast. Okay, so this can kind of be a, a nice little capability. Okay, so I'll just go back to STEMC Studio. Uh, you can uh, sign into GitHub um, with, with some GitHub account and you can save your code, upload it to um, GitHub. Uh, where it gets saved as a gist. Uh, and you can also publish it if you want to actually make this thing kind of like available and searchable. I can actually publish it to something I call the Stempsey Studio Archive. And now it's available to be searched. Okay. So there are, there are a lot more other features you can discover and, and find those yourself. Um, and as I say, there's a, a, a lot about how Stempsey Studio works and how you can use it uh, in that book. Um, I think I want to cover one other thing that might be useful to, um, for example, Alfred. Now, if you look at this um, Explorer view over here on the left-hand side, 
you'll see that I'm showing a number of files, which really are like, well, these are the real sort of software files, but not really the, the more engineering files. And you might, for example, want to actually see like the configuration files. And the configuration files define things like, how does this get compiled and uh, checked and that kind of thing. But most importantly, uh, there are configuration files that allow you to defy, uh, define where libraries get pulled in from. And so you can see here, I'm pulling in JSX graph from, uh, from this location. This isn't the only way you can do it. This is the, the more explicit way of actually defining where things kind of come from. Uh, there are kind of like shortcuts that are a lot easier. Like you can kind of come in here, uh, the project settings, and you can say, I just want to pick a certain version of JSX graph. And um, I don't know if I, well, I could pick a version like that. Um, these are the kind of like the sort of convenient ways of doing it, but there is this kind of explicit way of uh, pulling in um, exactly uh, where these uh, libraries are going to kind of like come from. So that kind of like might be useful to Alfred for testing. Okay, so that's the um, quick overview of STEMC Studio as the editor. Um, so now I'm going to kind of like get into, I guess, a little bit of a uh, story. <laughs> So we'll just come out back out here. So uh, back in the JSX Graph conference of uh, 2019, um, I was demonstrating STEMC Studio. And at that time, I was really just demonstrating it as a live coding environment that could use JSX Graph. And of course, everybody was presenting um, formulas, uh, you know, Moodle formulas and stack questions. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I guess everybody's doing you know all this other stuff with learning management systems um i should i should learn something about that um so um so i started looking into that a little bit after the conference now unbeknownst to me um a uh, an attendee at that conference um his name is is burkhard um had actually seen my um presentation and he thought oh that would be interesting maybe i can use stemc studio as my editor and I can kind of copy and paste the code into my Moodle formulas text box. Um, and so he started doing that and was having some success with it. And then he contacted me and told me what he was doing and you know, was, was asking for a little advice on a few things. Um, when I saw what he was doing, I was really kind of like quite surprised um, because there was a lot of sort of manual intervention in his code, like changing the JavaScript code so that um, variables um, uh, would get substituted and, and all of that kind of thing. And I was just, I was a little bit flabbergasted to be honest. Um, sorry, that means uh, surprised. Um, so I was a little bit surprised um, and thought, you know, that it must be, it must be possible to kind of like improve, you know, this, you know, the really, there must be a better way surely to uh, make it easier to engineer, um, these uh these applications and i think there is i think and i think this is going to be a very interesting possibility going forward so um i'm going to take you to the lti oh oops i'm trying to change my browser there we go <laughs> i thought my i thought my program my uh pc had crashed for a minute there so I'm taking you to the Learning Tools Interoperability webpage, um, which is hosted by IMS Global. Um, there is a frightening amount of content uh, in this website. And if you try to read it technically, um, it can take a long time to absorb. But the bottom line is actually um, really kind of quite simple. Um, so here, this diagram, I'm not going to reproduce it. I'm just going to use, use what we've got here. Here's your learning management platform, your learning management system on the left-hand side. And the idea is that you're going to be able to embed what we call a learning tool into that platform. So where you have in the past used a Moodle plugin um, or something like that, now we're going to have a standard that defines how your platform can consume a tool okay so there's a you know a lot to be sort of said about this diagram every every little kind of like word kind of counts you know we have kind of security going on here this is a very secure um 
establishment of communication between the platform and the learning tool. There is an exchange of keys going on. It, it seems pretty complicated, but they've actually done a great job at automating that. And I'll, I'll show you how that, how that happens. The security is such <clears throat> that the platform can actually trust the learning tool to put information into the gradebook. Okay, so it's possible now to write an application that um, can put information in the great book. So you can see where this is going. I said to myself, hmm, if STEMC Studio was actually a learning tool, if it actually understood this LTI protocol, then it could be a learning tool. It could be embedded in a platform. Okay. And uh, and so that's that's basically what I spent last uh, last year doing um, was um, making it LTI capable. Well, not the entirety of last year, but of last year. Okay, let me just show you a few other things here. Um, there's a, there are a lot of very kind of like um, obscure um, names for things here. Uh, they've got this deep linking. You know, this is kind of like marketing talk. Uh, you should just think of the word linking. Linking basically is how does your platform link to a particular application you've written over here. We're gonna demonstrate that. Uh, here's another thing, LTI Advantage. You'll find it's very confusing. They'll talk about LTI 1.3, LTI Advantage, and like, you know, what, what, is the, what is it all about? Well, really, you should just say LTI Advantage is just LTI 1.3. And this version number, LTI 1.3, uh, has been all over the place. They had like version one, then they went to version two, and then when they went back to, back, back to version 1.3, very confusing, okay? Um, and uh, the, the only thing you really need to know is that LTI 1.3 is the standard that you need to be kind of like concerned about. Uh, you can actually see in this um, um, uh, product roadmap here, this, this release here, where they say that basically, uh, it's basically saying LTI 1.3 is, is, is the standard going forward and everything else is deprecated. Okay, um, anything else we should look at on this page? Uh, not really. Uh, if you haven't done LTI before, like 1.1, you should be thankful because you can come straight into 1.3. You don't have to worry about migrating and that kind of thing. Okay, so that's what LTI is. Uh, let's go and look at a little bit of LTI in action. Okay, so we're gonna go over to, um, I'm not sure why this is oh. trying. I'm trying to click on my Moodle here. I'm not sure why that tab is not activating. Ah, there we go. Okay. Um, obviously, an issue with uh, running Zoom on uh, Ubuntu. Okay, so here is um, uh, a uh, a Moodle. Uh, site that I have sort of rented, if you like, from STEMC, uh, from Nomeo. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to do the first step in connecting uh, Moodle to um, an LTI tool, and that's called registration. Okay, so uh, I'm logged in here as administrator, and I'm going to go to site administration. I am going to look for the uh, plugins. And we'll go on the external tools, manage tools. Okay. And to register STEMC Studio, I'll just make sure we're yeah. Uh, to register STEMC Studio, it's as simple as just typing in uh, the following URL, which is actually in my book. So uh, stemcstudio.com slash tool. Okay and clicking L add LTI advantage. Okay, and what you'll see is that the tool gets added here. It's like becomes like a badge uh, down at the bottom. Uh, the tool, when it's initially added is in a sort of a deactivated state. So to be able to actually use it, I need to activate it. So I'm gonna click the activate button. Uh, there are some other things that you can look at here, which is this is some of the, the tool configuration details. Um, there's nothing to be done on your part here. Um, sometimes this information is used and you would take it over to your, your tool provider 
and they might enter something like the client ID, and that would be for billing purposes or something like that. Um, but there is, there's nothing else to be done uh, for STEMC Studio. STEMC Studio is free uh, to use. <clears throat> so now STEMC Studio is registered, and uh, we can actually start using it uh, to uh, build uh, our courses. Okay, so the next pro the next process that was registration. The next process I'm going to show you is what they call deep linking, or just you can just call it linking. Okay, so I'm in edit mode. I am the admin, and uh, here I am. I'll just use this section here. I'm going to add an activity. I go to the external tools <clears throat> button here, and under here you should find the various LTI tools that you've installed, and then you can say select content. And what it's going to do here is it's going to load STEMC Studio. And um, there are several ways that you can actually get to the particular content that you want. Um, these are described in the book. Uh, one way is you can kind of like log in, if you like, and then you can download it. I'm going to do it uh, uh, this way. So I've actually already um, shared this with the archive. <clears throat> so I'm just going to link this project. And what you can see uh, happen next is a kind of a configuration step. So I can configure the way this looks. Now, right now, what this is showing is what we, we call the readme file, which I didn't show you before, uh, but this is a file in uh, that you can edit in STEMC Studio. It's like a notes that you can take. Um, I don't want to, um, to see that. Um, so <clears throat> I don't want to see the documentation. I could uncheck that, but at the top here, I can actually select things that will kind of like give me a course selection of buttons. And by doing that course selection, I basically said, I just want to run the program. And yeah, that's kind of what I want. Okay. Now you could actually then fine tune this and, and uh, so forth. Again, described in the book. Um, you might, for example, say, you know, I want to kind of like actually do uh, a coding exercise or something like that, where I can run it too, for example. Okay, but we'll just stick with uh, running it. And once you've done that, hit the OK button. And um, now we just save and display. So this is your activity now running uh, inside your learning management system. And uh, it's just kind of like as it was before. No code pasting. Um, no adjustment of variables. You get to work in a nice editor uh, and so forth. So that's the first part of um, seeing STEM C Studio in sort of action. But of course, in this, this example, we're not interacting with the grade book, right? So let's go and see how that happens. And what I'm gonna show you is I've created an application called LTI Tester. Um, I've actually got it down here in my local storage, but you could search for it. And uh, I'm going to run this application just so you get the idea of what's going on. So you could search for this application. You could install it in your own LMS, and you could use it to actually test um, to see whether LTI is, is working correctly. So what this program does is it allows you to sort of simulate um, uh, scoring something. Oh, let's, let's say the students a little bit, bit better, like an 8 out of 10, for example. Um, you can, uh, you can set basically the parameters of what you're allowed to submit to the gradebook, all right? And these two fields, uh, I haven't labeled them, but this is basically uh, the student's progress in the activity. And then this is basically the, uh, um, the educator's um, uh, progress in, in actually grading. And you can put a comment in. Okay, so, so what's going on actually behind this application? Uh, well, I'll, I'll run it anyway. Um, I'll put a comment in, just say good, whatever, and I'll submit it. Um, that's just a confirmation box I put in. And you can see the response here. Now, the response isn't very complete because we're just running here in STEMC Studio. So it's kind of like doing a simulation. When we when we take this and we run it in the LMS, you'll see the full uh, the full picture. But what's actually happening here? Well, um, I think perhaps to explain what's happening, probably the best way to do that is to go and actually kind of like, oops, sorry, didn't want to go there. And my, uh, sorry, there we go. Uh, I want to go to the user guide 
Um, and I'm going to uh, look at uh, this programming API here, this, this little diagram here. So this diagram really shows you um, kind of what's going on. You have your application code that's running um, and that's running inside STEMC Studio, which is running inside a frame, which is running inside the LMS. And somehow that's got to communicate with the LMS server over here and, uh, and, and uh, work with the gradebook. So to make this a little bit easier, because there are a lot of sort of hops involved, I've created a library that's called STEMC Studio Tunnel. And that just basically lets you access the gradebook with a very, very simple API. Okay, so we'll go back and take a look at what that looks like. The LTI tester. So here's STEMC Studio Tunnel. And there is an object which we call gradebook, okay, a uh, singleton object which represents the gradebook. And to actually put a store and score into the gradebook, I really just need to call the submit score method on the gradebook. Uh, I'm going to pass it a couple of parameters. The first parameter, the item ID, is like the gradebook column. Um, so when you launch an activity, um, there is a default column in the gradebook. We'll see this when we actually run it. There's a default column in the gradebook, uh, which is where your score is going to get posted to. Now you can actually add new columns to the gradebook uh, dynamically, actually in your uh, in your application. So if you, for example, have a uh, a question or an activity that has multiple parts to it, then you can actually put uh, those results into um, different columns of the gradebook. So this is the API for submitting it. Um, it is an asynchronous API uh, because you have to go across frames and go across the network and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, there is a little bit of sort of uh, asynchronous kind of like code to be concerned about here. Uh, for getting results from the gradebook, uh, also very simple, uh, just get results and pass in the same uh, gradebook column. Okay. Uh, so this is this is a just a, a very simple test application that you yourself can run. And as I say, it, it's going to just look like this. So let's go and run this in uh, our um, in our LMS. Uh, it seems to be difficult for me to swap tabs for some reason. Ah, okay, it's probably because I'm slightly underneath of that. Okay, so we'll go back. We'll add an activity. Again, external tool, picking STEMC Studio, selecting the content, and uh, I'll also get it the same way, LTI tester. So there it is. I want to link that. And uh, I'm just going to run it again, as we did before. So graded, so there it is. Click OK. And uh, save and display. So here's the LTI, LTI tester running, and uh, let's let's just uh, you know say the, um, the user score six out of seven, um, you know and that's you know, pretty good, and we'll submit that. Oh, it failed. Why did that? Well, of course I'm signed on as the uh, I'm signed on as the administrator, and uh, the administrator is not actually in this course. So let's go and sign on as a student who actually is in this course. And uh, here's the LTI tester. And we'll do that again. So, you know, anything six out of eight or whatever. Um, excellent. And we'll submit that successfully submitted. And you can see what's kind of coming back from um, the learning management system. Uh, this is the, uh, this is the actual, the results, not the score itself. And you can see how that six out of eight has actually been converted to a 75 out of 100 because that was the um, internally defined maximum score for the question. Uh, as a student here, I should be able to uh, go to the dashboard. Let's see, go and look at my grades. And you can see LTI tester, I got 75% on that thing. So uh, that's in a nutshell. Um, how uh, you know LTI kind of works, how it works with a, a tool. Um, I've shown you the LTI tester. Um, you know, what about real, real questions? Um, let's go back to STEMC Studio here. And I'm gonna show you, I think I have a math question that I had here. Okay. Yeah, this is a math question. Now, um, this particular question, 
uh, is a little bit more realistic um, from the point of view that there are a few things kind of like going on here, like uh, you've got JSX X graph obviously running. Um, I'm being asked to do something here, um, provide a function with a certain stationary point. And uh, let's let's kind of like let's get something close to the solution. So, you know, as a student, I type in that. Uh, all of you know that there are issues when you start doing this uh, in terms of like, um, you know, how do I kind of convert this thing? How do I analyze it and, and so forth? Um, the good news is that there are plenty of tools available. There are plenty of parsing tools um, that are shown in, you know, in this example here. Um, there are even now um, uh, computer algebra systems, which are just libraries um, that you can call. Uh, one, for example, is Algebraite. Um, and I'm working on a, a fork of Algebraite um, called Symbolic Math, um, which has some other features in it. Um, so there are libraries now that you can uh, use uh, that can do the kinds of things that you want to do with symbolic math. Um, for example, you know, check that a formula um, uh, has a certain, that the user has entered the correct formula, even though that their representation may be different. They may uh, be putting things in different orderings and that kind of thing. And in this case, you know, you can kind of like see as well that, um, you know, we're analyzing what variables are actually used in the formula and that kind of thing. Okay. And the student then can actually kind of like, you know, there's you create kind of like feedback for whether they, they're creating the right kind of answer um, and they can fix things, you know, and so forth. So um, that's just, it's just to say that, uh, Many of the things that you know you may be used used to with stack, you know the the computer algebra system, um, a lot of these things are now available as libraries uh, in uh, in the and they can run in the browser. and um, and so not not too much of an issue there. So I think it's kind of like time to sort of summarize a little bit. Um, Stemc Studio is uh, a um, is a live coding editor. Uh, it works with LTI, which which I view as, as really like the next generation of, of how content gets put in uh, to a learning management system. Um, I think I might unstop my share at this point. There we go. Um, so, um, you know, I think it's a, it's a good candidate for the next uh, sort of way in which content can be put into a learning management system. Um, I think the the, the important thing to to uh, note about it is um, that it's an interoperable standard. So it's not just about Moodle anymore. We're not just talking about a plugin plugins for Moodle. Uh, it's that your LTI tool, whatever that tool is, and, and there are many tools out there already, can interact with any LMS as long as it um, conforms to the LTI standard. And this suggests, for example, then that you could use, um, you could have question banks available and you could you could then actually kind of like take questions, reuse questions, um, mash questions, you know, basically modify questions to your own, own end, search for them and that kind of thing. And I think that's gonna be kind of like uh, uh, an important kind of motivator for people taking a, a serious look um, at LTI. Um, I, I, I think I wanna, try to um, put a little philosophy or maybe maybe answer some possible objections here. Um, one is uh, that um, this looks pretty technical, um, a bit more technical than perhaps what people are, uh, have been used to. Um, I think my philosophy on this is that the direction that we're heading here with um, content creation uh, is uh, a little bit similar, um, parallel to the way that web development has, has um, changed over uh you know the, the, the ages since the, the the invention of the internet uh, uh and um uh basically we're at a point now where to create a website you need developers you need um graphic designers you need usability experts and that kind of thing and exactly the same thing is going to happen in content creation we'll need instructional designers subject matter experts uh and technical people and you know so as much as I uh, am in awe of, of, the, of educators who are taking it upon themselves to roll up their sleeves right now and, uh, and do this, 
Um, I think it's doable, um, but I think that um, it's it's going to become a, a very uh, difficult uh, task to create really, really polished um, um, content uh, without the support of a team. Um, and then I think the other thing I kind of like uh, um, touched on is that there's, there's probably a gap today uh, between things like formulas, stack, and what you can kind of apparently do um, immediately and um, be highly productive with those. And if you were trying to do the same thing with, uh, for example, STEM C Studio and LTI, you'd probably have to write a lot of the base code yourself. Like, for example, getting random variable values. Uh, yeah, you probably have to do that yourself. Um, getting feedback. You do that yourself, but all of this stuff is destined to be replaced by, I think, libraries. Libraries are going to create that specialization, and they're going to close that gap. Um, so that's what I think I see in the future. Is I think I see question banks uh, arising, and uh, perhaps libraries being used to make people much more productive um, in terms of developing questions. That's it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, uh, I know it's a bit of a whirlwind tour, but I hope it's given you a good feel for both STEMC Studio and LTI. <laughs>